It's a season of singing. Everywhere you go, Christmas carols. This week, McKissan School had a Christmas orchestra out in a, in a church at Triwa. Tri State. Lots of people. It's beautiful, beautiful music. This week, his school on the 18th and the 19th will have a, again some Christmas music played. Some of you have already are coming out on the on the 19th. Everywhere you go. I like it when I go to the mall, even in August, and I hear the Christmas carols. I don't mind the business thing. I like the Christmas songs. Why? Because they are proclaiming Christ is coming. Christ was born. I like the message they give out. I don't worry about the merchandise and all the advertising. But I like the idea that songs are going on everywhere. Do you think we are the first ones to sing these Christmas carols? No. Luke tells us that there were those who sang before Jesus was even born. Mary sang her song, the Magnificat. Zechariah sang his song also. Simeon sang his song. The angels, just the angels, sang. Don't you see the choir that Luke has set up? The choir singing even before Jesus is born. Elizabeth herself sang her own song. The choir was already in place. The carols were already in place to be sung, and they were sung even before Jesus was born. Don't you like the words of Mary? My soul magnifies the Lord. I rejoice in the Lord. My spirit rejoices in the Lord. My God and my Savior. So way back before Christ is born, Christmas carols are going on. We join in today. We join the angels in heaven as they sing every day. We join them as they sing the carols of who Christ is and who God is in praise. We join them to praise God and to offer our gratitude. Why? Mary, a 13, 15 year old woman, is having a baby. And she goes in to meet her cousin Elizabeth. And Mary knows all the taboos and all the things that were going to stereotypes, the criticism, the rejection she was going to experience. She's pregnant and she's not married yet. And yet when she gets to her sister's house, her cousin, Elizabeth recognizes who she has in her womb. She says, blessed are you among women. You're carrying my savior. And it's out of that proclamation of Elizabeth that Mary busts out that magnificent. And she says, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, who is my savior. We come to join the song of hope of Mary. It's a song of praise. Because what Mary is saying, thank God he has fulfilled his promise. 13 year old, 15 year old, she knew the word of God as was in the Old Testament. She knew the promises of God. She knew who God was. Let me tell you church, it's hard to worship God if you do not know his word. On what basis are you gonna worship? How will you praise him? Mary is praising God because she sees all the promises God promised. Where from the time of Adam through the prophets coming through through her, she has a deep understanding of the mercy of God. She says that God has been merciful on his people and he has sent a Messiah, a Savior. It's a season of singing, season of music. So why do you sing? Why do we sing? Yes, we sing because it's the season, it's the spirit. It's the spirit of singing and praising God. Yes, even when we are in difficult times, we sing. We sing the songs of joy because there is a promise. There are promises that God had promised from the beginning of time. God has been promising to restore the earth, to restore the universe and Mary is singing it now. She says, I can see the reasons why God has done this. No wonder she said yes to God when the angel said, 
Mary, God will do it. She said, how? Oh. Mary did not disbelieve. All she wanted was an explanation. How is it going to happen? Zachariah objected. The father of John the Baptist. To, oh, I can't have children. And so he was dumb for nine months. He couldn't talk. Mary sought for an explanation. And then when she understood it, she was able to say. And now here she meets her cousin. She begins to talk about what God has done. The reason we come to worship every Sunday, we come to proclaim and thank God for what he has done. My brothers and sisters, we are alive this morning. Some folk did not wake up this morning. Some did, but they couldn't get out of their bed. Their mind wasn't good. But thank God we are alive on the side of the living and we have our mind. We got a lot to thank God for. Not so much for the guilt for Christmas, but we thank God for the blessings of life. Mary says, God has humbled the proud. God has pulled down those who were on the throne. She says that God has taken the things from those who are so rich and let them out empty. God, she says God has now empowered those who are on the margins, those who had nothing. God has overturned the whole situation. You see, God's reign is different. Mary has to praise God because God changes everything. The world we live in, this violence, Oppression, injustice, consumption. Think about that. All we want to do is spend every penny we have. Go and buy it. And the, and the sellers are good at it. They'll give us all the 75 and 80 percent off. And trick us in thinking, oh, that was done. It was way high, now it's down. It was never that price. But they pray, they, they pray on us and play on our brains and we think, oh, what a, what a, what a deal I got. I better buy it all quick. And so we stuff ourselves with things in our homes only to have to take them to goodwill with their tags on a few years later. Mary is singing about God because she says God's kingdom is one of mercy, is one of grace, is one of love is one of forgiveness. That's why she's so excited about what God has done. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in the Lord. What did Jesus say in John 4? They who worship the Lord will worship him in the spirit and the truth. Mary here is worshiping God. Didn't we sing earlier? Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. That's what Mary was doing. That's what we are doing this morning to come before God and say, here we are, your children. Mary is telling us the attributes of God. Who is God? Merciful, gracious. He looked upon Mary, a poor girl, a peasant, and said, you will carry the Savior of the world. Who is this God? He's powerful. He can change and restore that which was ruined. Mary tells us of a God who is restoring. No wonder her song is a song of joy. The pink color this morning speaks of the joy, the hope that the Messiah brings. And so Mary sings the song. It's the beginning of the fulfillment of the hope that they've been waiting for for centuries that the prophets spoke of. Mary sings a joyful song. She sings because there's a new vision of a God restoring that which was damaged. God wants to repair the human family that has gone wrong. God has given us all potential, but sometimes we do not reach our potential because of violence, injustice, and fairness. Mary says, let us all engage in God's work. You know, when she talks about how the rich go empty, She's talking about almost every one of us, each, each one of us here in church today. Every man and woman in this church and child are rich people. Compared to the people in Africa, in South America, each person sitting here is rich. The only way that God will bless us with the blessing that he's given us is to engage in helping others. I pray that God doesn't take away what he's given us. But what God has given us is for use, 
for others, to help others. This week, a Methodist church in Atlanta called Cascadia United Methodist Church. I don't know anybody read about it. Cascadia United Methodist Church. They went out to their local Walmart store to the layaway and paid off all the layaway stuff, $10,000, $10,000, and paid it off so that the people who are poor, who are seen the layoff, can go and have a wonderful Christmas. Cascadia United Methodist Church. Yes, they thank God they have so much wealth and so many riches. They said, we're going to bless those who are out there. They didn't hold on it. They said, it's our money. We need a new rod. We need a new parking lot pavement. They said, let us help out. Our sister church in Atlanta. God has blessed us. Mary is saying that God has blessed us so we can heal the broken world. God has healed us. Why? Because he has brought kindness and compassion and generosity in our hearts. His mercy, when God's mercy fills our lives, all we are left with is compassion, generosity, and kindness toward others. Church, we sing because we want peace on earth. We sing because we want mercy, my Lord, on earth. Church, we sing because we want the good news of Jesus Christ share with all who hurt, all who look at us with suspicion. Some people don't trust Christians. They're suspicious, are we real? Are we for real? And if we are, they will see the fruit of God's love as we come out and step out to help them, to stand with them, to join in God's work of restoration. Church, God has been in the business of restoring the world from the very beginning. Mary is singing because she trusted God. I think Elizabeth saw what happened to her husband. Her husband did not believe and he couldn't talk for nine months. And so Mary Elizabeth is so proud of her cousin. She says, you believed. Blessed are they who believed. You believed, Mary. You believed when the angels spoke to you. You believed in the promises of God. You believed in everything that God had said. Mary said, I'm your servant. Let it be upon me as you say. There's a song that says, I'll say yes, oh Lord. I'll say yes to your commands when the Holy Spirit speaks to me. I'll say yes, I'll say yes, I'll say yes, oh Lord. Is that our answer when the Lord calls us and speaks to us? Zechariah did not believe. Elizabeth celebrates that Mary was willing to say yes to God, to carry the Savior. Elizabeth still speaks to us. I can, I can just hear them singing in the background. I can hear the great choirs of Elizabeth and Mary and Simeon and Zechariah and the great angels singing. That deafening sound of he is our king. He is our Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mary's song, she didn't whisper her songs. You know how I encourage you singing here every Sunday? I encourage you not to sing like people who are at a funeral, because sometimes at funerals we sing it out. I remember when we sang at uh, uh, Brother Walt's funeral, they, they congregated and sang it out. I'll fly away. There was so much energy in life. We meant it. We'll fly away. We'll see our brother one day. Mary, she's in the presence of God, singing out her soul, singing from her belly, saying, he has blessed me, he has blessed the world, and I'll be his servant. Mary understood who God was. Do you understand who God is? The only way to understand who God is is by reading his word. Understanding it, reading it, being Bible study, then you will know who God is. When tough times come, you won't say, where is God? You will know that God has always and is always with you. Mary understood the facts of God. It wasn't here say, all oh, they say that, all oh, they say it's about God. She knew how God, she knew who has saved the words. We see it. She told Jesus all the words that Jesus was able to quote and to learn 
Because many years later, Jesus at the age of 12 in the temple, he was able to debate and speak with those Pharisees. And they wondered, where did he get all this knowledge? Mary taught him. Mary understood God's word. She understood who God was. True worshipers will worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Mary had her mind sorry, sought in God's word. How much are you sought in his word? How much are you deep in his word? When the word of the Lord is read, do you say amen to it? Or do you say, okay, let's move? When it's read, do you say, that's not for me? Or do you say, like Mary, your servant is listening. Mary's mind is so saturated in the word of God that she will not doubt him. He will carry her through the years of her son Jesus to the cross, to the resurrection. When you hear the word of God, do you yawn and say, okay, there goes Pastor Chris, quoting the scriptures again. Where did he get that one now? Or will you be like Mary? Would you say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Would you say, speak, Lord, those are the truths that I want to know, and they will inspire me. Mary understood who God was. And you know, church, when you understand who God is, you will always break out in song. When you understand what God has done for you, you break out in song. My father is not a good singer. He has a very poor voice. Although I'm, I'm not the best, but understanding music and as a musician, as an instrumentalist, my father is poor in music. We tried to tell dad, please don't sing. <laughs> my mother was fine. I tried to tell my father, why don't, no, he still sings. He, he not only sings, but he began to make up his own songs. He began to compose his little songs. Who will come home and sing the songs that God will come back home safely. And we wonder, how do you play that on the piano? How do you play that on the guitar? But it didn't stop my father. He kept singing. He has about 40 songs that he's done over time. But they're all in some awkward minor chords, minor keys. They're hard to, 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 to follow. But one thing about my father, he knows the word of God. And whenever he sees that God has done a miracle, he breaks out in a song. Do you know people like that who will break out in song, who are singing all the time? Why? Because they are so saturated in God's word that they are grateful for everything they see happening. They see God at work, at, at their place of work, in their family, in their children, their grandchildren. They see God at work. Mary saw God at work. And she broke out in song. She said, Lord, I'm your servant. Let it be to me. Mary heard the word of God and she obeyed the word of God. It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to obey it. She understood who God was. She understood what his word said. And she had understood what God had done. What has God done for you that you can say? Who is God? Can you magnify the Lord? Can you sing it out? Or will you sing so quiet, so soft that even the person next to you can't even hear you? We pray this morning that you understand that when you do not magnify God, then you have placed yourself in deceit. You think you are eat all. I'm here to tell you you are not eat all. There is a God in heaven who owns everything, who is everything, who deserves all our praise who deserves all our praise and honor and glory. And when you understand that, then you will know that the one who needs to sit on the seat in your life is God. Let him in. Let him have his place. Because when he has his place, your life is going to be well. You won't, be, you won't worry about what other people say. Mary did not worry about that she'll be excommunicated because she was pregnant. She found a sister who said, God loves you. God cares for you. God will bless you. All we have to do this season is to give God the praise for Jesus. Every day, turn to those scriptures and give him thanks for what he's done. I don't know what challenges that you have ahead of you. There could be financial problems. 
You could have lost a loved one. There could be family matters. You could be ill and sick. There could be things that have tempted you to walk away from God. But this is one thing I want to say to you, God is still is on the throne. And when God is on the throne, all you got to do is say it and pass it out. My soul magnifies the Lord. God is on your side. God is going to be on your side. It doesn't matter how difficult that you can't even see hope ahead of you. God is on your side. In my first appointment in 95, this woman told me, Pastor, I do not celebrate Christmas. I said, why? She said, I lost a son on Christmas Day. Christmas Day is a, is a tough time for me, she said. I said, I see your pain. I see your difficult. But I got reminded that God is still God, even in the valley of the shadow of death. He still walks with you. This morning, as we leave, as we go, despite all the glitters of Christmas, despite all the stories and the songs, don't forget God is on your side and God is with you. All you have to do is to believe him. And when you believe him and believe in his word, he will enable you to stay. Mary had humble obedience. She humbled herself and God blessed her. Let Mary's song, let Mary's hymn remind us of God's work, what God has done in Jesus Christ. May Mary's song bring light in our lives. May Mary's song of hope and joy bring shine bright through this season of Christmas. We don't know what will happen tomorrow in our lives, but one thing we know, God has given us a savior. God is seeking that we know his word. God is seeking to, for us to praise him and then fill us with his joy. God has done great things. So we can sing with Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord. I rejoice in my spirit for what God has done. Great things has God done. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. For you are a great God. We thank you for your mercy. There may be someone this morning who's struggling with different things of fear, concerns, and doubts, health matters, financial matters, family matters, different issues of life. We come to your God with gratitude and seek your mercy. Have mercy, embrace us in your arms and heal and restore and grant relief. Bless our families, oh God. Bless this nation. Take it out of the tumult that it's been through and heal this nation. Heal the world, oh God, of violence and war and give us peace. May the Prince of Peace reign supreme and your name be blessed forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.